Welcome, uh, welcome to our kitchen. Uh, my name is Mr. Man, I'm a food teacher, and this is my daughter, Millie. Say hello, Millie. Hi. Hello. Now, we are going to set you all a challenge. You know, it's all to do with the extraordinary times that we're in at the moment. And uh, this is a particular challenge with a twist. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to what that challenge is. Now, this is our hashtag Rainbow Bake Off. We are going to have fun kitchen forage for a Rainbow Bake Off. That's right. I want you to create uh, and the most amazing rainbow uh, bake off, but with a kitchen forage uh, twist. OK, um, so this is the challenge. Hashtag rainbow bake off. Uh, your challenge is to brighten the lives with a rainbow bake off and as a baking sign of support for the NHS and key workers. Um, so our rainbow bake off uh, has a twist. Now, the lockdown twist is I thought it'd be fun to try a little food foraging and find some wild edible colours as part of your daily exercise. OK, so we're in lockdown larder situation at the moment, which means that you might not be able to get food colourings, you might not be able to get um, bits and pieces to colour your food with. So um, a little bit of food foraging I thought would be fun as part of, say, a part of your daily exercise. Now we need to um, we need to tell you a bit about this before we begin, though, because um, um, uh, and we need to give you some examples. So these are ones that teachers have done before. So um, these are ones you can see some lovely demonstration from um, Lots of people around the school. So we've got some here from the finance department, from other teachers have produced um, as a thank you, say, to key workers and the NHS out there who are working so hard. We've got teachers, NHS and police. They've got all sorts on that. OK, but you can also see down there the bottom right here produced by one of the head of years. Um, this is a one which has also got some of those forage food in. In fact, the one on the far left has got forage coloured dyes in it. OK, so this is some examples of what we're looking for for our Rainbow Bake Off. Um, but we must play it safe. So there are some golden rules with foraging, which you must be aware of. OK, and these are the rules. Number one, never eat anything unless you're 100 percent sure it is safe to do so. All right. I do not want anyone being ill. OK, so please make sure you are keeping safe. And that is 100% safe by not eating anything unless you are absolutely sure. Never eat anything that's poisonous. OK, basically, that's what we're looking for. Um, you must be able to. Uh, let's go on to the next one. You must be able to correctly identify what you pick. OK, so please make sure you can correctly identify what you are going to be eating. OK, if you're unsure, if you can't, then don't. Um, pick respectively and responsibly for personal consumption. Now that's the law. Um, actually, foraging is covered by a law in the country in the UK, um, and that law is the Wildlife and Countryside Act of 1981, and that's what it says: respectfully, responsibly, and for personal consumption. There are other things as part of the laws as well, um, and you should also check your local rules and bylaws for picking in specified areas. Uh, OK, so before you do this one, just check what's allowed and what's not allowed. There are certain boroughs in London where you're going to end up with a huge fine if you um, if you forage. So just make sure um, we need to check your uh, nature reserve rules if you're getting it there. Um, be very careful if it's a site of spe uh, special scientific interest, like an SSI site. Uh, that means there's a rare environment. So you shouldn't be picking from those. So just check your local rules, um, farmland rules as well. Um, just check that so you're not abiding by those. Never uproot any plants from common areas. Yeah, you can't actually um, dig plants up. OK, so the, the rule is you're picking responsibly and respectfully for your own personal consumption. You're not actually digging the plants up. You're not going to start digging up all along the hedgerows here and digging up around uh, your house here unless it's your own area. Private areas is OK, but if it's in public area or common area, you shouldn't be going around with a spade and a trowel and digging up all the flower beds. OK, uh, never pick around spray fields, roads or industrial areas. Absolutely. You do not want what you are going to eat covered in chemicals. So please make sure you're not picking around, uh, uh, say, uh, farm areas that are sprayed, fields that are sprayed. Um, we don't want what you take home laced with chemicals that you can't touch or you certainly can't um, eat. So go away from roads, away from industrial areas, away from sprayed fields. OK, and finally, this one's a great tip. This is from the Wild Foods UK. Um, never pick 
more than half of what you find of anything anywhere. All right. So basically, we are being sympathetic to the environment when we do all this food foraging. So just make sure um, of all that. And like I say at the top, I'm just going to go over again. Never eat anything unless you are 100 percent sure it is safe to do so. All right. And that will be be able to get some wonderful colors for our rainbow bake off. All right, how do I know if I'm 100% sure if it's safe? There are some great things. There's some good apps out there. Um, there's one in particular that I um, absolutely love. There's two, well, there's two here that, that I, both of these that I've got, um, but one of those I love more than the other one. Um, that is picture this. So you can actually take a photo as you walk out and it will tell you whether it's an edible or not edible. It'll tell you about it once or instantly on the photo. There's another one there who's called Candide, another app you can use as well. Um, that has also got more information and that's a general uh, one about identification of plants, but that's a good one as well. So you are correctly identifying what you hit the pick. But I'm going to give you some helpful hints today. Um, I'm going to quickly go through some helpful hints on how you can pick um, some safe ones. All right, for our Rainbow Bake Off. All right, um, like I say, always check the local laws and rules uh, to make sure what you're picking. And that is if you want to, they're the links to the actual Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981, the law that covers foraging and um, some bit more law bits there if you want to. OK, so don't forget um, to abide by the notices. Don't be going out into park areas, especially where you've got uh, park areas and play areas that are closed down due to uh, the COVID-19. OK, so please make sure you abide by any of the rules that you see out when you're going out. Absolutely. You need to listen to that chat. Um, what he said is absolutely right. Um, make sure, obviously, in these uh, peculiar times, you are abiding by whatever rules there are put in place because of COVID-19 as well. So if your park area is closed and you shouldn't be going into that, don't be going in there to forage. What other rules do we need to think of? OK, so when foraging for food, please make sure we're not doing them right down at the level where you might have uh, animals urinating on them or on the side of a road where you're likely to get any comeback from vehicles. OK, try and look, make sure you're doing these in nice, green, open spaces. Uh, when you go for your exercise and walks. Again, he's absolutely right there. You need to make sure that you are doing them in wide uh, open country areas if you can. Um, so not directly on the roadside. So maybe on banks, verges, further around uh, hedgerows you can look at. Um, but don't forget this is part of your daily exercise too. And it should be a nice, lovely uh, exercise you're going on. All right, so we said about sweet things as part of your challenge. So you could do um, some sweet cakes there as part of your foraging rainbow bake off. Uh, they're lovely, um, but you could also do savoury. So here are some teachers uh, have done, other teachers have done some savoury rainbow bake-offs. Um, we've got a wonderful one there from the biology department there, which is made into a bread, and we've got um, some wonderful uh, pesto being made there as well. So it can be savoury as well as sweet. Now, while we're talking about savoury um, and we're talking about breads, um, I'm just going to quickly flick back to myself here um, and show you something I want to just quickly uh, show you. Um, so while we're in lockdown larder situations and you're thinking about bread for your rainbow bake off, um, you might be thinking, I can't get hold of any yeast. Now I get that. And so um, what we're producing um, is, at home at the moment and it's real simple to do so. Oh, brilliant. Millie's got those ones is we have got this stuff. It is growing. It is living. It is yeast. Uh, it's a sourdough starter yeast. And you can be doing this. This is what you could be doing to get you. Um, if you've got a little bit of flour and a little bit of water, put the two together, equal quantities into um, a, a, a loose topped uh, covered jar. OK, and then what will happen is after you give it a few days, um, what will happen is you will start to see it. Well, it starts to see and you might be able to see it on the screen it bubbling away, but it smells Oh, amazing. It smells sweet. It smells fruity. Um, and you've got there enough yeast to be able to make yourself a savoury dough. So if you're in a lockdown larder situation and you want some yeast, that is one way you can do it um, uh, to make some bread for your bake off. OK, so that's another little helpful hint. Also, if you think you can't get hold of flour, try and get hold of um, your local supplier, your, your local supplier that goes for a restaurants, um, or your school supplier maybe as well. Um, go and speak to those those people who are doing commercial supply for flour and uh, email them and see if they can't deliver to you. Or you could perhaps email your local pub if you can walk to that or restaurant and see whether you might be able to, um, they might be to leave some outside for you can go and collect for you. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, we're using um, our school supply 
supply called Bid Food, and they they supply uh, nationally across the UK, um, and they will do next day delivery. Normally, they'd only be doing uh, schools and other restaurants and and the like, but now they'll do to to it. So that's another way. Okay, um, let me get back to the uh, PowerPoint here um, and just quickly tell you a bit more about these foods that you could be doing for your rainbow. So we said about some savoury ones, and in fact, we've been doing this as part of our lockdown. We've been teaching, and these are two of the rainbowy ones we've been doing with forage foods. Well, um, with uh, my year sevens and my year nines. So the year sevens, this is a soup on the side here, nettle soup with lots of forage flowers to give it that colourful rainbow look. On the right there, you've got um, a, a lovely pastry, filo pastry, homemade filo pastry with uh, nettles and other forage foods inside to give it that colourful look. So it doesn't need to be sweet. And if you wanted the recipes for those, I'll put those on there. You can always freeze frame those. Um, there is the wild nettle soup that we did with the year sevens. And here is the uh, uh, wonderful cheese and nettle borac. It's a phyllo wrapped into a circle full of nettles and a few through. And Millie's going to help me. We're going to show you some uh, things you might be able to use and identify as uh, foods that you can easily use and some quick little wins to use those forage foods. OK, so we're going to start with a garlic mustard. Now, um, here we have uh, garlic mustard. Um, OK, um, this is my garlic mustard. Millie, do you want to hold that one? Uh, Let's get some more of this garlic mustard. Millie's going to chop this up in a minute for me. Um, this is garlic mustard. Okay, it's growing all along the hedgerows at the moment. So how do we identify this? It's kind of got um, a small white cluster of flowers just at the very, very top there. I'll just get that onto the screen there. Um, and it's like a button, little button white flowers on it. It's got a really long stem, so about 10, 15 centimetres long. So mine's actually about, the, yours is probably about 20 centimetres long. Really long stem on there. Um, so when you're doing that, uh, they smell, can you smell the end there? They smell a little bit, they've got quite a strong odour there, um, where you've got those of um, garlic and mustard, which is why they call this one uh, garlic mustard. OK, um, so well, you could be using this one. It's a nice edible one. You can put it in salads. Um, and what I'm going to do really, is if you want to just chop those leaves off there, she's just going to use the knife there to chop the leaves off. And um, we'll just show you how you, you can very, very simply just make yourself some colourful. Um, you saw that pesto you saw earlier? We can show you how to make that. That will literally take seconds to make. So Millie's just chopping those leaves off now. I'm going to put those leaves um, into a, a little whizzy thing here. Um, in with that, I'm just while she chops that one, I'm just going to very quickly show you that. We're going to be putting in there 50 grams of pine nuts. There we go, 50 grams of pine nuts into there. Um, beautiful. Um, and in with the 50 grams of pine nuts, I'm going to put in there 50 grams of cheese. Yeah, how's the chopping going, Millie? So this is what we've got here is garlic, um, say this is garlic mustard or hedge garlic as it's called. Um, so this is a really long stem. It's got sheet, uh, it's got the, the, the different leaves there that look a little bit like um, hearts. So if you can see that one there, they look a little bit like hearts on there. Really long stems, very small little, um, say button like uh, tiny little flowers on the top. Very long stems there and they can smell it. You can smell it's garlic and there is smell it mustard. So we've got 50 grams of pine nuts in there. I'm going to put into there 50 grams of cheese. Ideally you go with a Parmesan cheese, but if you haven't got char Parmesan cheese, this is locked down a lot of times. So we'll make do with what we've got on there. So I'm in with that part, 50 grams of pine nuts, 50 grams of cheese in there. Do you want to whack your leaves in there? That's the garlic and mustard leaves you just chopped up in there. In they go, whiz those, they're going to whiz those ones up. Uh, we're just going to uh, do a little splash of olive oil. Do you want to do that one there? A little splash of olive oil in there. Fab, let's get splash that one in. Yeah, good. Right, and we'll put some lemon juice in there as well. I'll just get a little, oh, little tip for lemons, okay? Uh, get your lemons, get your lemon. Go chop that in half, just as a bridge there, like that. And then once I've chopped that in half, here we go. What we're going to do is put a bit of clean film on top. So you might think you've well, got a little one of those posh squeezy things. You could use your hand just over the top. But if you put a bit of clean film over to, um, underneath it and then when it goes through, make some holes into the clean film and then the, the little seeds as you're squeezing it will go straight into it. Now, if you haven't got uh, fresh lemons, that's fine. Um, you can just use um, just use uh, some, some bought lemon. You could lose lime in this one. I'm just going to squeeze that through. So there's a little there. I'm just going to put some holes in that one. OK, with my knife, I'm just going to then squeeze that in. Hold that one up, Millie, to the camera. Fabulous. OK, and there we go. All that lemon juice is going in there and all over Millie. <laughs> there we go. Right, Millie, whisk that one up. Pesto. Boom. Uh, garlic, uh, pesto, uh, done. Uh, I know a friend of mine does uh, boom all the time to his recipes. Um, there we go. Um, wonderful. Um, the Royal Marine, who also cooks. Brilliant. Mike Beaton. Um, there we go. Um, there we go, on you go. Um, let's get this one whizzed up. There we are, let's go both of them. Press them all up. There we go. Sorry, you can have
Okay, so that is how you make a self a pear stone. We'll pull that one up and show you in a minute. I'll um, continue with that one. So pear stone there in a few minutes using garlic mustard. Right, let's move on to the next one. Um, we're going to go on with another garlicky one here, which is great for a savoury one. And you want to hold those ones up to the camera, Manny? Um, this is a beautiful one. Now this is growing right right along the um, in fields, wooded areas. Really lovely this one. So this is a three cornered garlic. Okay, three cornered garlic or three cornered leek, whichever one you want to call it. It's a uh, um, it's a bit like a spring onion. It's got a bulb on the bottom there, like a spring onion. Um, and if you look actually at the stem, the reason why it's got it, it's got a concave three sides. Oddly, it's really easy to identify, okay? So really easy, you're not gonna get this one uh, mixed up with anything. It's also got very long, thin stem, which is also three-sided. So concave three-sided um, stem, concave with three-sided three -sided leaves. Okay, um, so you'll easily get this one. The, you can see on the top there, um, you've got, um, as well as the triangular section, if you cross this one through, so you easily know which one this one is. Um, you will, you'll be able to see it's got um, these really nice, like white, long white uh, bell flowers on there with a green distinctive marking through it. Um, again, smell really. Onion and garlic, okay, we got an onion and garlic smell on this one. Um, so really, really lovely one to do with this one. Um, Millie, if you want to just slice this one up, you can slice this one up like a spring onion. You can use pretty much the whole thing, okay? Well, you can, you can use the whole thing, including the leaves, which are really nice if you want to put those into a salad, okay? So they, they form a lovely part to a salad. You just They just take those ones off and okay, eat them. They're really lovely. Eat that one. Oh, really garlicky, really garlicky, oh, really garlicky, but really lovely. Okay, so Millie, if you want to slice that one up really thin, so what we need to do is just a claw here, thumb right back, finger over the top, and then we're just going to slice back. Well done, Millie. It's going really fast. There we go. You carry on. Okay, um, so um, she's just um, doing that one, slicing this one about. Now, um, what can we put this in? Well, um, like any other garlic, you can put it in stir fry, you can put it in a stew, you can put it in soups. And it's really, really lovely. And again, if you can't get hold of garlic or you can't get hold of these things at the moment, um, this is a brilliant thing to do. Uh, what are we going to put it in? Well, I made some uh, some hummus earlier. Um, so we got some hummus. Hummus is easy, nice, easy one to make for lockdown lard. If you've got some um, old tahini in the back of the cupboard there um, um, and some chickpeas. Obviously, chickpeas are nice high protein things that you can keep up, keep in the still covered for ages. So I just made that one up, whisked that, that one up here with some lemon juice again. And there we go, that's it. Do you want to get a handful of those up? She's just chopped up and that's the, your three cornered garlic or three cornered leek, as some people call it. Um, hold it up to the camera. There we are, nicely sliced up. Whack that into the hummus. There we go, we'll stir that one through into the hummus. Also does really nice, that's three dishes, two dishes already. We've done pesto, we've done hummus with that one. And we've gone on to, uh, we've looked at two different items. So the first item there um, we we looked at was our um, uh, wild garlic mustard um, or hedge garlic. And then we've gone with our um, three, um, three cornered garlic or three cornered leek. All right, um, now let's move on to stinging nettles. Stinging nettles, okay. Now, Millie, gloves. Um, now, when using stinging nettles, um, you should be, I would suggest you use some gloves. Now, again, they're really easy to identify. Everybody, when they were back in primary school, um, all uh, did nettles. So you know what a nettle looks like. But um, we'll just go through it anyway. So Millie, do you want to pick, pick up your nettle? So she's got her gloves on there just so she doesn't get it. I'll show you how you can pick them without actually getting stung in a minute as well. OK, Millie, go for it. Grab your nettles there. Um, OK, grab the nettles. Um, so she's got a neck, let's show this to the camera. Okay, there, that, I'll take them out of the way, not, there we go. So nettles, so we got nettles there. Um, now, I'm going to show you how to pick them. So she's got one long one here. Now, um, when you're picking a nettle, okay, um, if you, the, all the parts of the barb of the nettle all pick, point upwards, okay? So when you're doing this one, if you just get your fingers underneath, okay, if you imagine this is in the, uh, on there, and then give it a little twist, and then, um, then pull it up, and that's the way you want to do it. Now, what Millie's going to do at the moment, she's just going to get all these leaves off there. You're going to get the leaves off there. Um, now, this has all been washed already, so she's got the leaves off there. She's going to lay them onto a tray. Ah, uh great -huh, tray there. We'll get these in the oven in a minute. Get them onto a tray. A little bit of um, chilli, a little bit of paprika on the top. Spray with some oil on the top into the oven. Uh, real quick there, three minutes, and you've got nettle crisps. Okay, so if you've not made... 
What temperature? Good question. Um, you want to be doing that at one, uh, 180 to 190, depending if it's found on non fan assisted oven. OK, so you want to be putting that into there. OK, you happy with those? You're going to spray those with oil yeah. and they're going to do that. Me, it's just going to carry on with it. So nettles, really easy to identify. Soft green leaves, hairy prickles on them. Um, they get a taste between a cross between a cabbage and a spinach. OK, so it's a kind of and you can replace it for anything in a spinach. OK, soups, pies, um, stews, again, whatever jam pack full of A and C and vitamin K as well. So br brilliant ones there. So really, really good ones there, A, C and K. Um, so let me just quickly show you how you can pick it and what it looks like. As things are going upwards, what you need to do is get underneath the leaves and then find that and just give it a little twist. And that's absolutely fine. No stings at all on that one. Um, so that's the best way to do it. Get underneath the leaves, give it a little twist and pull it up and you go with the new shoots here. Now, how to identify? Make sure you've got it. If you look at the leaves, it's quite interesting, this one. If you look, look at the leaves on this one, um, they go one way, two leaves go one way, then the next leaves down go the other way and so on. And it keeps doing that down the stem. OK, and he's right again. He's good, this chap. All right, um, so uh, let's go uh, back to this. We've just done the nettles. Uh, Millie, do you want to show us what that looks like on the tray there? Um, fabulous. Grab us some of those, those, uh, those there. So Millie's just got our nettles onto a tray, a little bit of oil. Um, we're going to do a bit of seasoning on there, aren't you? Yep. So uh, that's fine. A little bit of paprika on there. There we go. And do you want to put some chili on there as well? Whack those in the oven. Boom. Again, and we're going to get those ones on the side there ready for crisps, nettle crisps. Um, OK, uh, that's fine. Get into the oven. All right. Um, next one. So let's look at um, another one. Another. We'll look at three more really easy to distinguish for, for, with you here. Now, the next one that we're going to look at is dandelion. OK, Millie, bring over the, you want to bring over the dandelions for me. Um, so the dandelions are an interesting. Um, I'm going to bring have fabulous. Um, dandelions are a really interesting one. Um, I'm going to. You can actually eat the whole plant again. Bum, bum, bum. Easy to dice, really easy to do it to identify. Now that the um the this why is it called dandelion? It's called a dandelion. It comes from the French word, okay? Um, and it's the French word that means um don't as in teeth, uh de lion. De Lyon. Um, so it's the teeth of a lion. Okay, now that's why we get this like teeth like uh, protein. You see, there's a teeth there. Um, teeth of a lion, Dante de Lyon, um, is where the dandelion comes from. You eat the whole lot. So you can eat them from the top to the bottom. Now, this top bit, really, really sweet and beautiful. Really lovely. Okay, um, it it's, uh, tastes lovely. You can actually just, mm, very lovely, very sweet. Really nice colour pool. Going to add you some beautiful colours to your food. Okay, um, so let's. Uh, how do you get the colours out of it? So what you could do with the colours is I've got some dandelions here that have been just stewing in the in a pot. There, you can just see them. That dandelion has just the yellow parts. Just pull the yellow parts out the top. Go and grab that seven in a bowl there. Um, and um, you can uh, just get the juice out of that to get a lovely yellow colouring. So we just pour that one through there, Millie. Go on, you do that one. She's just going to pour in the dandelions that have been soaking um, through a sieve there into the bottom, and we should have a yellow colouring for our food. Have we got a yellow colouring, Millie? Yeah. Oh, look at that. So if you want to just hold that one up to I'll move the camera down. Da -da -da -da. There we have it. a yellow colouring, food colouring for your food. Beautiful. Now, if you want to, you can make that into a jam or a honey as well, um, which would be lovely with really, really sweet. Um, OK, um, now uh, let's move on. Let's have a look at some of the other things about dandelion, as well as obviously the uh, the teethy side of things. You've got really long stem there. So um, and it's full. I mean, jet and pack full of vitamins. You've got vitamin A, um, more vitamin A in this than carrots has got. OK, so I mean, that's how good this stuff is. Um, real nice forage food. Um, not not long step there. So vitamin A, uh, more than the carrots, um, vitamin C, vitamin K, um, really good for that um, side of things. Um, and we can use it in making lots of things. Mini biscuit mix. Biscuit. Biscuit mix. OK, so we can use this to make some biscuits. So we've got biscuit mix here, Millie made earlier. OK, let's go and do this. I want you to start picking those bits off. Look, there's got loads of dandelions there. Start picking those off um, into there. Now, again, in with that, I'm going to be putting some lemon juice in there. So a lemon and dandelion biscuits. So we'll just put some lemon juice in there. OK, and we'll get that one onto a tray and into the oven. All right, so we've got lemon and dandelion Biscuits, hurrah, weird, but lovely. Tastes really, really good. Um, so we've got lemon and dandelion uh, biscuits. Millie's just literally putting the, the yellow bits out of the top of the head, the sweet bit. And so you can eat the whole lot. Now the whole lot can be eaten 
Um, and you've got, um, oh, there we are, time on the crisp. Um, the whole lot can be eaten. Um, and if you, the, even the roots. So the root can be chopped up like carrots, okay? And actually put into stir fries. Or later in the year, you can actually make a, a coffee out of that one, um, grind it up, dry it out, and make a coffee out of it. Really bitter. So you've got bitter going up to sweet on this one, but a beautiful edible uh, flower. How are we doing with the heads there? Lots of ye yellow dandelion heads going into there. All right. Um, do you want to go and put that one? Here we go. Can you show the head, dandelion heads in there? Brilliant. In with the lemon. Do you want to go and get that one? We'll put that one on the side of us to go make some biscuits out of that. Mm -hmm. Now you might be thinking, I haven't got biscuit cutters. I, this lockdown, a lot of situations. What am I going to do with um, things? Well, another little hint here. We'll put a pins today. Um, so another little hint here. If you haven't got um, biscuit cutters, like those sort of biscuit cutters at home, um, don't you worry. You can still make the dandelion and lemon biscuits. Um, try using some tuna tins. Oh uh, yeah, they have tuna tin. A tuna tin will work just as well to make yourself um, a beautiful piece there. So um, there we go. Um, don't you need those now? So just switch that uh, off. That's fine. Um, right. Uh, let's move on to our final two. Our final two here, um, and they are gorse. Now you might think, well, where does gorse come from? On there, if you just be careful with the um, pieces on the side there, and this yellow flower would be great to go into our foods there, um, and used to colour our foods as well. If you're looking for rainbow uh, different colours to colourings to go into your food, so this is uh, gorse. So be careful the prickles on this one. Okay, so um, back to me. Uh, where are we? There we go. And. All right, uh, back to me and oh, back to Millie. There we go. She has got some gorse. I'll get some of my own. There we go. Um, gorse, 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 gorse. Um, we have got some gorse here. Um, it is um, quite prickly. Um, we're uh, we're in obviously in Devon and uh, we're up near the Woodbury Common where there's lots of this. But Commons, Exmoor, Dartmoor, wherever uh, more areas are, um, this is will grow. It's a really nice evergreen shrub. It's got really prickly uh, spines on it, uh, which are where the leaves would be, um, and, and really decorative yellow plants. Uh, they actually look. Um, a little bit like, um, oh, what do we say, like little seed, seeds, there we go. They taste of coconut or almonds, okay, and you can eat those raw, okay, uh, really, really nice. So if you want those, if they taste of a bit almondy, a bit coconutty, eat them raw, put them in salads, really, really nice, or put them in a pesto, make a yellow pesto. So instead of the spinach, um, we can go here, um, with so instead of the spinach or any nettles or instead of using uh, the garlic, mustard, mustard garlic or any of those other ones we've used so far and make a green one, why not make a yellow one? We're all about rainbow colours. Oh, you can put them in a rainbow colour salad, Millie. We made a rainbow colour salad earlier. Um, let me talk to you about that. Um, and you can also put the next of our ones, which is primrose. I was going to talk to you about primroses. Um, they are beautiful in here and we've actually got, this is what Millie made earlier. Look at that. Beautiful rainbow colours. We've got daisies in there. We've got cherry blossom in there. We've got forget-me-nots, nice blue forget-me-nots in there. Um, we've got primroses in there. Primroses are lovely and edible. Uh, again, really sweet. Um, um, very, very nice. Um, well worth eating. Mm, very nice. Primroses. Oh, nothing left that primrose. Uh, primroses, if you put a little bit of egg white on them and some sugar, okay, um, you can get some lovely crystallised ones for the tops of your cakes. So primroses, really good. But um, you'll notice we've actually put there we go. There's our gorse flowers in mini salad. It's beautiful rainbow salad. Can you all see that on there? We've got pinks, we've got purples, we've got blues, we've got yellows, loads of different things. And oh, I knew I have a So that is a rainbow salad. Um, um a rainbow salad and um, primroses gorse in there. Um oh I said forget me nots. Um let me see if we've got some forget me nots. I think we've got some forget me nots. Let me show you what forget me nots look like. On top of biscuits to give a nice colourful picture there. So forget me nots tiny little flowers there but say very tasty and sweet to go on the top of um biscuits or on top of your cake cake you do those are tiny little blue flowers you want to grab some blue ones out there forget me nots you're looking for other colors oh there we go tiny tiny small blue ones there we go let's just show those up there beautiful mm, really lovely um okay final one final one i'm going to show you before you get going to help you on this one and that is going to be our uh, we like this one um, it's called a cleaver or catchwood, otherwise known really as what? Sticky willy. It's known as sticky willy. Okay, um, so here we have um, one known as sticky willy. Um, if you know this one, why do we know this one, Millie? Because it sticks. Because it sticks to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the other good thing is you can chop it up, put it in stir fries again, 
Do you want to chop it up? Do you want to show me some chop it up? No, chop it up. There we go. Um, she's just going to chop that one up. Hairy bristles all over it, obviously, because it's going to be able to stick to things. It's, it's, it's sticking to, to her there, but we've got some little piece out. Lovely, um, uh, it's, the, it's got tiny little leaves. The leaves are like branch off itself, like that one. Um, they got a honey smell, um, but they taste different to honey. So it's got like a honey smell, but it's kind of a bittery taste on there. So she's just chopping that one up there. The stems, nearly a metre long, some of these stems, but they end up going all over the place. It's worth sticking to see all over everything. Um, uh, the flowers, they're kind of nondescript, they're tiny, teeny, tiny, tiny, small. I'm going to find see if I can find some with some flowers on here. Um, oh yeah, there are, there are. There we go. So this is Sticky Willy or Cleaver. There we go. You might just be able to see teeny, tiny flowers on there. Um, but again, really nice one um, to put in there. Honey smell, bitter taste, really nice. Look, just chopped up um, into a stir fry um into some savory food there beautiful um uh now some of these have different side effects um so um cleaver will help you wee uh, more um whereas uh dandelions will help you poo more okay um so um when you're using these fruit and vegetables you use these medicinal purposes originally um in the early days um so be be aware of some of these things um when you're doing it all right we are nearly 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 done um, so I'm just going to very quickly uh, finish off here. Um, so, um, to recap, what the challenge is, my challenge to you um, uh, over the next few weeks is to brighten lives with your own Rainbow Bake Off. There we go, Rainbow Bake Off, hashtag Rainbow Bake Off. Um, you may have got rainbows stuck on your doors, stuck on your windows, stuck on the outside of your house, drawn on the outside of your house, but I want to get it to the kitchen. We're going to do the same in our kitchens now. We're going to brighten up lives with a rainbow bake off. OK, um, this is with a lockdown twist because I'd like to think have some fun to try a little forage food. But remember, 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 please, that first golden rule. Never eat anything unless you're 100 percent sure it is safe to do so. All right. Um, so um, that is that is um, uh, what I'd like to do. Some ideas from other food teachers across the country who are doing the same thing at the moment. Um, the rainbow bake off. It's going big. We are. We all want to show support in our own ways to all those wonderful NHS workers and key workers out there. And this is just one way of doing it. Also getting you out and doing your exercise and getting you cooking. Thank you to everybody. OK, thank you all of you for, for watching and bearing with me while we went through and did all those silly things with food. Um, OK, thank you from our household to yours. Now, um, take care, stay safe look after yourself and look after uh, people around you okay um at these uh these extraordinary times okay thank you very much everyone i look forward to seeing all of your bakes